This video started off as a simple, oh, I got a cheap kit and it's going to be fun, let's make it. And now, do -do 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 -do, as you can see, it's grown from that. Um, if you are at all struggling with your enthusiasm for modelling, if you're at all struggling with ugh, getting back into it, feeling overwhelmed, it has to be perfect, all that kind of stuff that I hear people say, give this video a try. It might just help you regain your enthusiasm and get your modelling mojo back. It's meant to be fun. G'day and welcome to Dave's Model Workshop. It's been a long time since I've done a video about a model kit. Check it out. Um, yes, you join me as I'm busy putting blue tack onto this Mitsubishi KI-109 to give a really speckly camouflage job. So I've painted the plane a sky blue colour and I'm busy putting the blue tack on and then I'll airbrush it green and hopefully we get that nice green mottling effect. That's the plan anyway. Uh, yeah, it's been a very, very long time since I've done a modeling video, hasn't it? Bloody hell. It's been ages. And, you know, it's something that I like to do occasionally just to... Oh, I was going to say let off steam. Let off steam is perhaps too dramatic a term. <clears throat> um, it's more something that I like to do just to get my mojo back. So I still, you know, still make scale models occasionally. And compared to the scratch building of buildings that I do, it's it's oh, incredibly refreshing because you just snip things out, stick them together, and then you end up with a finished model. Uh, the work that I'm... Uh, first of all, let me just show you the kit that I'm building. This is it. So it's an ancient, ancient kit. I got it for 20 bucks. Total bargain. And I'll show you the inside of the wings, you can see just how old this is. Here's a photo. Nineteen sixty-six. Nineteen sixty-six. How classic is that? Uh, so yes, that's what I'm doing. I've gotten really. Uh, I've been busy making my buildings, and I love it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I totally, totally love making my scratch building buildings. It's something that brings me joy every day. But occasionally, very occasionally, you have to sort of step back a little and just just recharge the batteries with something that's fun and easy and, you know, revitalizes your mojo, so to speak. I will give you uh, a bit of a glimpse of, of just how much I've jumped into this right now. Let me show you. So, <clears throat> like I said, that's what I'm working on. Look at all these. <laughs> I have never built 172nd before, never, ever, ever, and uh, I just thought, you know what, I want to build an Imperial Japanese air fleet, so grab, um, not an air fleet, but I wanted to build a few variations on a theme, so I want, you know, there's so many different Japanese planes and so many obscure variants that I thought, let's grab some, and there was a hobby shop closing here in Melbourne, and I think this was the guy's personal collection, actually, and they're all these LS brand 1960s ones, except for this Ravel. All these 1960s LS models, which I think became Ari, A-R-I-I -I models. Anyway, they're fantastic. I did build recently. <laughs> so here's all my stuff that I do seriously. I did re build recently this little guy, which is a Val uh, torpedo bomber, dive bomber. It's an airfix kit. The canopy fits like a dog. It's also 1966, 1967. Canopy fits like a dog. I enjoyed making it, and that's what got me hooked on 172nd this week. It's great. So yes, that's what I'm building at the moment. I can give you a little glimpse. That's my very, very messy work desk. Look at that. It's chaos. Chaos. I'll give you a quick glimpse of what I'm building. The glue is just drying there at the moment. Don't look at the name on it because it's secret. It's being built for somebody. I can't really show you that brand name just there. But that's the rest of the building that I'm working on at the moment. So that's my day job. And um, this is what I'm doing on this rainy Melbourne weekend for fun. It's really time consuming sticking all these little tiny bits of blue tack on. I'm going to come back soon and show right, you the whole thing's covered in blue tack. Whoa, it's time consuming. But. Let's see, I'm going to start airbrushing with some dark green, some IJN dark green, Imperial Japanese Navy dark green. Wish me luck, and I also hope that the blue tack doesn't leave horrible, horrible stains when I take it off. Let's right. see. It's painted, 
It looks particularly scabby now. It looks totally scabbed over and like some kind of horrible skin disease. Um, I'm going to leave it to dry overnight because it's a bit of a damp and rainy day here in Melbourne and also the light's not the greatest now so I'm back to it tomorrow. Well, it's the next day. We've got a bit of light, a bit of sunlight. The rain stopped a little bit and it's time to see how well this has worked, whether it has worked or not. I don't know. I have a horrible feeling it might look a bit big and coarse. But you know what? I'm not stressing about it because I'm just doing this for fun. Um, so many people get hung up on model making. It has to be perfect. It has to be, you know, the best thing possible. And you know, I'm the first to say, push yourself, improve. You know, don't stagnate. Don't, you know, don't not push yourself. But also, don't you know, beat yourself up over it too. You know, it's meant to be enjoyable. Yeah, look, it's a start. I don't know. I'll see what the whole thing's like. It might be a little bit over scale. We will see. But it's fun. I've just been painting some of the markings. So the tail, the hinamaroos, the red circles, and the yellow leading edges of the wings. And it's just so much better than the decals that come in the kit. You know, particularly for Japanese planes. You know, the hinamaroos are just the easiest thing ever. Get yourself a circle cutter. Get yourself some film, some low-tech film. And you just cut them out. Put them on, a bit of airbrushing, and it's 10 million times better than the decals. You know, for an American plane, we have to line up stars, or for a British roundel, maybe not, but for Japanese planes, oh, you'd be crazy not to. Crazy. Here's how we're looking since you last saw it. And, uh, yeah, I've done a fair bit of work. I'm just about to do the most hair-raising bit, which is removing the canopy masks. You're never quite sure if you're going to reveal something beautiful or if you've completely balls it up and the paint has seeped through your, seeped under your masks or your glue has frosted the inside of the canopy it's hard to know and it's always right at the end of the build so if it's gone wrong it's like oh no what have i done we shall see oh there's a bit of frosting there hope you can see it there's a little bit of frosting right there mm. Anyway, I'm going to take the rest off and show you how it's looking. So here is my completed KI-109 Interceptor, based on a Peggy Medium Bomber. And man, it was heaps of fun. I loved making this. It's not perfect, but you know what? I'm damn happy with it. And I guess that's the whole point of this video, is just, you know, sometimes you need to do something that's fun to get your mojo back, and you know, it's just... Be enjoying what you're doing. It's not every model has to be a showstopper. Not every model has to win a competition. Sometimes it's just fun to make a model and enjoy the process. Look at this little tail gunner. Oh, insane. And it was a lot of fun. My favourite thing... Oh, nearly wiped out the antenna there, the aerial. My favourite thing on this is... Whoop. Jesus, I just broke it. <laughs> Bloody hell. Um, my favourite thing on this is... You got a little crew hatch underneath. That's fantastic. Good if it's in focus. Yeah, a little crew hatch. I like that. So, I've enjoyed this so much that... I've built some more Japanese aircraft since. All 172nd. We've got a Judy dive bomber. It's pretty average. Don't look too closely at the canopy. Oh, look, I'll show you. The canopy is a shocker. Oh, that's terrible. Bad. Um, there's a Val dive bomber. I love the Japanese early war stuff. You know, it's just... Uh, it's that transition period between the 30s and the 40s, and it's just fantastic. It's really... You know, there's nothing sleek about them. And an Oscar fighter. Quite happy with this guy. This guy, it's really nice. The, the chipping came out well. It's really good. So, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed making these. And it's been a real palette cleanser. It's been a real mojo builder where suddenly I'm like, oh man, I can't wait to get back to the studio and build that. It's really fun. And I'm thinking I might even do like a wall frame with the Japanese Air Force, all of these, you know, mounted vertically. So imagine a whole bunch of these in some kind of a picture frame, quite a you know, shadow box deep picture frame. It's going to be fantastic. Moving on to my next one, which is this all 
ridiculously old, old 1960s moulds. They're fantastic. So yeah, I guess my point is I'd never built 172nd before, and I thought, oh, yeah, a bit not worth the effort. It's fun, and really, it's a palate cleanser. It really does. It has gotten back my love of building models, and I can't wait to get stuck into the next one. So yeah, um, I hope this helps. I, I hope this inspires some of you to you know, get your own mojo back and just enjoy building. Not everything has to be perfect. Just enjoy it. Push yourself, but it doesn't have to be a brain stress. <laughs> a brain stress. That's the official last words. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.